today I just want to show people how to get started um, making a basic Shiny app and just understanding the basic concepts. In order to do that, we can just start from the website. This is the Shiny for Python website. It's uh, shiny.rstudio.com slash pi. I know that might be really little in the browser, but uh, we'll post a link for that. And the easiest way to get started just working in code is just click on examples. All right, and that will take you to this website, shinylive.io, where you can just, you know, you can just work on your code here. You can look at the examples, uh, edit the code, and run the apps. And uh, this is one of the most exciting things, I think, is that we can, you know, you can use Shiny without having to install anything, without having to install uh, even Python on your system. You can just get in here and start working right away. Um, and then, you know, as you develop an app that becomes more sophisticated, um, you can work in a regular sort of a regular Python installation. Um, but to get started, this is a great way to do it. Okay, so let's take a look at this example app. There's a whole bunch of different examples over here, but uh, by default, it just starts on this page. And to understand how a Shiny application is built, there's two main components. There's the UI, which is the part that's displayed in the web browser. This is a, a web page that's displayed in the web browser over here. And then uh, there's the server logic. And this is Python code that gets executed when somebody connects to uh, this application. Um, it executes this code once, and then it will re-execute reactive functions uh, in response to users, uh, user input. So there's a UI here, there's the server code here, and then that stuff gets put together into a shiny app object over here. And so we're calling this app object app, uh, which is, that's what you have to call it for this all to work. Let's take a look at the UI. So in this case, we have uh, input slider, which is this thing over here, and then output text verbatim. So this is, uh, text output, and the verbatim means that it's printed as code with a monospace font instead of being printed as normal uh, HTML text. And as we change the slider, uh, it causes this output to change. All right, so we've got these, this input and this output component, and they're wrapped up inside of something called a page fluid. Now, we don't have to know the details about this right now, but um, for most applications, at this point, we can just wrap these components in a page fluid. All right, so now what's connecting them together is this server logic here. This is a function, it's called server. And as I said earlier, it gets executed once when the user connects to the application. Now there's a bunch of these decorators here. There's, you know, this is saying, we've got this thing that's an output, uh, it's rendering text. And then here we have, a, we're defining the function, um, txt, which returns a string. So now I'm going to change some of these names just to make it a little easier to explain things. So let's say we'll call this slider um, my slider and input my slider and text, um, you know, I'll call it txt computation. All right, and we'll put this over here as well. So I made some changes to this application. I'm just gonna, I can click this button to rerun it. Now it looks the same, um, but over here, the variables should be, it'll be a little easier to see how things line up. So I've got the slider input and it's the ID of it is my slider. And then I can read it in this function down here. So I can say input dot my slider. And then I invoke that as a function and this, this function will return the current value of the slider. Uh, and then what I'm taking, what I'm doing with that value is I'm putting it into a string. And this function text computation, um, it takes this string and it's sticking it into this output text verbatim. One of the cool things about Shiny is it's reactive computing model. So if I move this slider, I don't have to do anything extra to tell it to um, re-execute this function. It just knows like, hey, input my slider has changed. So re-execute this function every time I do that, All right? Now I can do some other things to this. Like I can change this label here. I can say, you know, input a value here and 
I can, because this is all running within the web browser, uh, Python is running in the web browser and Shiny is running in the web browser, um, I can just click this button here and re-execute uh, re this application every time I make changes to it. So it makes it really easy to try out new things.